At the moment, there's a lot of talk again about the Swiss Nazi Templar Bank, Credit Suisse, that apparently went broke with 6 billion Swiss francs in debt. And on March 19th, the other huge Swiss bank, UBS, announced to buy the CS Credit Suisse for 3.25 billion Swiss francs. I already told you in my videos how the giant Swiss pharmaceutical company Roche on November the 4th, 2021, bought 33% of its own company back for $20.7 billion from the other Swiss pharmaceutical giant called Novartis. And that Swiss Roche and Swiss Novartis are in fact one single company divided by differentiated tactics for better attack strategies on the world market. And now Swiss CS and Swiss UBS doing the very same, meaning they have been one single company all along. And when a company disappears by bankruptcy, there will be no more debt paid out to the people to whom the Credit Suisse Bank owes a couple of billions in total. So UBS inherits a clean new bank without any debts to be paid. And this is why the sly Swissies split up their giant banks and their giant pharmaceutical companies in two. So when lose the game, no more liability whatsoever, which is a win-win situation as a result of splitting up their companies. And remember the huge Credit Suisse scandal called Swiss Secret from February the 20th, 2022, which triggered the Ukraine war four days later, and which I've explained to you in my videos. The Swiss Nazi Templar banks are incredible, ruthless gangsters. So here it says Swiss Nazi Templar banks with the Swiss flag, which is in fact the Knights Templars colors, red and white. It's the only flag in the world, which is a square. And they turn it around. This is the hospitalers who have a white cross on a red on the ground because when the Knights Templars, they got forbidden in 1291 when Switzerland was founded, all the wealth of the Nazi temp of the, the Knights Templars, it all went into the hands of the hospitalers who have a white cross on a red underground. And this is where the wealth of the Knights Templars went to, to Switzerland. And the Knights Templars, they founded the banks, they founded the Czech, they were the first multinationals in history. And this is the result. Credit Suisse and UBS. UBS, that means the United Banksters of Switzerland. And this is the logo of UBS. Three keys for the concept of three. They got a Templar V here in the key. 
They got a lot of sixes for the 666. This is a six here in the um, in the key. Altogether, there are six keys or six parts here of the of the of all the keys here. And here you can see part of the logo of Credit Suisse, who had in fact a almost a swastika logo uh, before. Swiss Nazi Templar Banks. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. Nobody is stopping them. So in this video here, here's the title on my uh, channel Gure on the Brighton uh, video platform. Um, I put it on Brighton because of the um, because of the censorship on YouTube. They would definitely take it off, you know. So here you can see um, in this video here, the last one, how I explain that the uh, the two biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world, the Swiss Roche and the Swiss uh, Novartis, that they are in fact one company, and now they're doing it again with uh, the UBS and the Credit Suisse. It's all out of tactical reasons. And of course, uh, so no liability, financial liability, most of all, um, will be taken. It's um, it's a scam, really. And here in this video here, you can um, I'll give all the proofs and I explain how the um, the scandal of the um, Credit Suisse. Uh, last year, how it triggered the Ukraine war four, day, four days later after the scandal. So here it says, Swiss Secret, this is Swiss because of Credit Suisse, the same bank. And I explain you uh, what happened and why um, the bankruptcy of the uh, Credit Suisse, in fact, it's related to the um, to the Ukraine war, and so the video can be seen on YouTube on my channel Gure, which is out of use out of for the moment uh, because of the YouTube censorship. And here's the title: Ukraine War Made in Switzerland. I will put it in the description below the video if I won't forget it. Here. On the uh, picture, you see uh, Putin, and here the um, the guys of the Arab Emirates, and Emir. That's like a pharaoh, like a, a prince. You know, it's a it's a um, a title of the nobility, Emir, like the word Emirate, Emir, Emirat, and um, it's of the pharaohocracy. Well, they both are. So I'll read it for you. So Putin, he's saying. I'll empty that Swiss bank and bring you my assets and my money from the Credit Suisse, okay? Harasho. So today's bankruptcy of Credit Suisse in 2023, and exactly one year after the Swiss Secret scandal of February the 20th, 2022 are of course related to each other giving the oligarchs putin and his mafia pals the various members of the aristocracy and the russian mafia and the italian mafia one year time to withdraw all their money from the Swiss Credit Suisse and transfer it to the Arab Emirates, while the world's media, the EU, the NATO, Mr. Putin, Zelensky, and the US were distracting us one year long with all their lies around that low-intensity war 
called the Ukrainian War with a special purpose, the time needed to empty the CS Credit Suisse from all its sensitive criminal banking assets by Pharaoh's worldwide mafia. And now this happened exactly one year after that enormous bank scandal, Swiss Secret, about which I talked about in my videos. While that's done and the Rusky oligarchs money safe in the Arab Emirates, today, March the 19th, 2023, and one year later, after the huge Swiss Secret banking scandal and the one year Ukraine war distraction, the bank is empty. The Swiss Credit Suisse CS Bank is empty. The money is safe. The Credit Suisse Bank dumped, sacrificed, and the Ukraine war ready to end for the obvious reasons herewith explained. The global mafia of Pharaoh and their Swiss base have fooled us all along and just sacrificed a whole bunch of Ukrainians and their children in order to bring their stolen wealth into safety and far, far, far away like in in a fairy tale of 1001 nights but for us it's more like a horror tale so here it says credit suisse these buildings we know them they are the emirates here are some of the yachts of the the uh, uh, ruski ruski Emir um, oligarchs just say mafia, eh? Ruski mafia. Vorizagonia, Ruski. And here, the money. So the Credit Suisse money transfer to the Arab Emirates. This is where it's all about. And it all got triggered on February the 20th, 2022 when they miraculously stopped, like pushing a button, they, they stopped Pharaoh's bug war as well. Four days later, the Ukraine war, you know, just sacrificing these people only for this, yachts, money, wealth, all right? As I've told you numerous times, the Swissies are always in it, people. Just follow the money trail and it will always end up in Pharaoh's neutral utopia in the Alps, the Octogon Fortress, who after the global financial crisis of 2008 immediately applied for a banking license in the Arab Emirates, meaning that the banks in the United Arab Emirates of the worldwide aristocracy still are Swiss Nazi Templar banks of the Octagon in the Alps and Putin is their Swiss sleeper agent and coded the Black Prince of the Baltic St. Petersburg Teutonic Knights. So here it says Octagon logo on the hats. These guys here, they have an Octagon logo. 
coincidence. <laughs> and here it says Putin is Swiss sleeper agent. And this here on the left hand side is Octagon of the Nazi Templars. They all belong to it. For the obvious reasons, the Swiss banks change their names all the time. So they can disappear now and then and do some neutral reset. And the original name of the CS Credit Suisse was Schweizerische Credit Anstalt, and this was their logo. So here it says SKA, that means Schweizerische Credit Anstalt. From 1968 to 1976, they had this here. And then from 1976 to 1997, when Lady Diana died, they had this here. But also with this, I wrote it down here, Nazi swastika similarity. So, I mean, there is a similarity with a swastika. I mean, you can see that immediately, can't you now? Everyone who sees a hidden Nazi swastika in the logo, please stick up your right hand. No, not like that, silly. Okay, I get your point. So here it says, everyone stick up uh, their right hand. So here you see a Swiss cross. Here it says Helvetic with another Swiss cross. And here, so here you see a bunch of Swiss Nazis sticking up their right hand because they saw the similarity of the... Um, the former Credit Suisse uh, Swastika Nazi logo. Thank you guys. So here you see the Nubian with a Swiss cross here and a, um, a iron collar around his or her neck with a chain on it. And here it says Credit Suisse and the, uh, the Swiss flag. I'll read it for you. Swiss slave driver family Escher founded Swiss Credit Suisse SKA, Schweizerische Kreditanstalt, Nazi Templer Bank by Alfred Escher. Credit Suisse, under its old name, Schweizerische Kreditanstalt, was founded 167 years ago. In the year 1856 in Zurich, Switzerland by Alfred Escher. And the Escher family owned a slave plantation in Cuba called Buen Retiro, owning about 90 slaves and probably many, many more and many more slave plantations also in America as they were doing business uh, in the um, cotton industry and as I told you so in my older videos the Swissies were deep into the slave trade with most of the slave ships belonging to the Swiss because the Knights Templars who founded Swaziland had an enormous fleet to get all the wealth and the Templars treasure into Switzerland and to get all the Crusaders towards Jerusalem and cross the Mediterranean from the um, from Sicily so here uh, two and a half minutes it's a bit difficult to read here so here you can read all the swiss names involved in the swiss slavery and here is the name escher so i have to run the video so you can see it now you can see it here here 
that says Asher from Zurich. You see here. These are the ones. This is the family that founded the Credit Suisse. Mr. Putin his bank, Hitler his bank, the slavery bank, and so forth and so on. So the video can be seen. I think I made it like 12 years ago or seven years ago. But I think I made it before and had to re upload it. It got um, censored. So there you can see Escher. And it's on my older channel, Gatse Frats. And here is the title. If I don't forget, I'll put it in the description underneath the video. And here it says, Swiss involvement in slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. You know, everywhere where they can make a big dollar, you know, they are there. So here we can read about Credit Suisse. And uh, the former name here, Schweizerische Kreditanstalt, here it says, with that funny logo. By the way, this logo here, uh, there's a, a white triangle in it, and it has a square in it. So the square is here, and the triangle is the concept of three that stands for the compass. So it does say square and compass. The concept of three and the concept of four. And, um, and square and compass is of course uh, white for the for the new world order the uh, the old um, and uh, red was for the old world order or still is actually and so here is that logo it really looks like a swastika. It has a swastika in it. Well, of course, you know, they were dealing with the Nazis, you know. And... So you just punch pause if you want to read it. But... Uh, Ah, this is what I wanted to show you, the history. And Credit Suisse founder was Alfred, Alfred Escher. Um, there he is. And this family was into slavery. Yeah. Highly criminal family, you know, the, and uh, which we can still see in this, uh, and this bank here and here they you know they call it controversies you know this the various crimes where they which which they did here the forex manipulation the u.s tax fraud conspiracy 2014 uh, well you can read it yourself a spionage scandal, you know, it's, it's without end. And here, this is very important, Swiss Secret, Swiss Secrets Leak 2022. Well, it was actually on um, February the 20th, just four days before the Ukraine war. And among, uh, so I'll read it for you, details of 30,000 customers holding over 100 billion Swiss francs in accounts um, at the bank were leaked to the Süddeutsche Zeitung and became known as uh, Swiss Secret. Among those with accounts at the bank were a human trafficker, a torturer, drug traffickers, and a Vatican run account that allegedly invested 350 million fraudulently, fraudulently in London property. On February the 20th, oh, there we go, there we got the date, Credit Suisse said it strongly rejects allegations of wrongdoing. Well, of, of course, yeah. 
Now they're now they're gone. And here, the Russian oligarch loans documents destruction after invasion of Ukraine. Well, of course, you know they all went to the um, to the Arab Emirates. You know, following Swiss sanction on Russia during the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, Credit Suisse issued legal requests asking hedge funds and other investors to destroy documents linking Russian oligarchs to yacht loans, a move which they faced considerable criticism. A uh, launch approach to demanding documents linked to the bank's compliance with sanction on Russian oligarchs. Of course they destroyed it because, you know, the money had to go to the Arab Emirates and it's, it shouldn't be linked anymore to, uh, to this highly criminal bank. So there he is, the man who founded the Credit Suisse and uh, which by that time still had the name of uh, Schweizerische Kreditanstalt. And Alfred Escher was born in Zurich into the Escher vom Glas family, an old and influential dynasty. So if you see these double names, you know, this is nobility, Escher vom Glas. But because in Switzerland, you know, they, um, they had the, uh, the horizontal de democratic um, rule of the Knights Templars, you know, all these, um, most of the uh, nobility titles, you know, just disappeared. Um, because nobility, they uh, rule in a vertical rule, which we can see now coming back all over the world, you know. The feudal system is coming back. And uh, especially here in France with all the things going on, you know, they, um, they, Macron now he can take decisions through a new law that uh, people that he can um, make new laws without you without using the parliament. It's not going to be debated or elected. So this is uh, feudal. You know that's why so many people are going on the streets and everything. You know. Um, so. So he's, they call him the founder of modern Switzerland. So he's a Freemason, keeping his hand like this under his jacket, the right hand. They always do that. And here it is, Credit Suisse. And here, Alfred Escher didn't like this state of affairs. In 1856, he succeeded in establishing a new bank, Schweizerische Kreditanstalt, now known as Credit Suisse, primarily for the purpose of securing financing for his own rail company, the Swiss Northeastern Railway. Increasingly, however, Escher's bank financed other public and private sector endeavors too, uh, thereby developing into an important lender for the Swiss economy and the founding institution of Zurich's financial center. Well, Zurich, together with um, um, I forgot the name, the German town, that they are really the financial centers of uh, uh, Frankfurt. They are the, the financial centers of uh, Europe, Zurich and Frankfurt. And um, well, Frankfurt is, of course, um, Baron von Rothschild the nobility of the uh, jaywalkers who are no jaywalkers at all um, this one too you know the old pharaohs this is nobility who still rule the entire world the pharaohistocracy so now i'm going to show you about his um, about the asher family being into slavery um, a highly criminal family so in this article, it shows the Escher family. Yeah, one of Zurich's most famous industrial families, the Eschers, also have direct links to the slave trade. 
but there's no evidence of the involvement of its most famous son, Alfred Escher. Other members of the family ran a coffee plantation in Cuba that held around 90 slaves. So, but as the family, they were in the, uh, they were also, here it says, they were in the textile uh, business. And textile, well, in those days, you, you, you need cotton. And cotton is, of course, it's very much related to slavery. And that's also the Escher family. So, I mean, they kept it secret. I mean, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And of course, there's more articles to, to find about this in German than in English. So I just show one article in German. Here, the Alfred Escher, Sklaven, Plantage. Uh, Sklaven, it means slaves. It's the same word, they only have a K here. Don't ask me why. And plantage, it means plantation, slave plantation on Cuba. Uh, Credit Suisse, Alfred Escher, you see. And um, so this is just the tip of the iceberg, you know. They, most of the crimes, they, they kept it um, hidden. Credit Suisse, um, Sklaven Plantage von Escher's family. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, they, they had more than one slave plantation as they were working in the, uh, in the textile industry as well. Yeah. So this is the same article here, yeah? Sklaverei, slavery. And, um, uh, so I have to show you this also. You know that I'm, you know, to give some proofs, at least. Let me just punch pause. So here, there's some more. Zurich was linked to slavery through state bonds, trade, and plantations. The city of Zurich supported slavery and slave trade in the 18th century, so in the 1700s, financially and played a role in the deportation of thousands of Africans. Moreover, the city was linked to slavery through the cotton industry. So you see, they had plantations, only we don't know the names now. And, uh, you know, and as a study by historians of the University of Zurich. So, there you see a nice picture. Well, not very nice at all. And so, here you can see again, you know, that slavery, it's the, uh, it's the elite, their dynasties, it's the nobility behind slavery like this uh, Escher vom Glas, or, or that's an aristocratic name. And you, you don't get big if you don't belong to them, if you're not part of the fair aristocracy. So I hope all the Nubians and other people, I mean, the white people are slaves themselves, you know. In the feudal system, they were a thousand years long as slaves under the Roman Empire. Uh, Seventy percent of the Europeans, they were slaves, you know. We're all slaves. The American Indians are slaves, you know. Well, only Pharaoh couldn't make them work, you know. <laughs> More into hunting and, you know, being free. Uh, so it's not the, really the white race behind it. It's the, it's the nobility, the dynasties the fair aristocracy, and their base is Switzerland with their big banks like Credit Suisse. They are, they are, they are big pharmaceutical industries. Uh, yeah, I'll read it for you. Their study shows that like other towns, Zurich was involved in financing the transatlantic slave trade. In the 18th century, for example, 
Zurich purchased shares in the South Sea Company, a British company that actively traded slaves. During the time Zurich held these shares, the South Sea Company deported 8,636 African people across the Atlantic to America. In the same period, the company also shipped 27,858 slaves from predominantly British islands such as Jamaica and Barbados to the Spanish colonies. The city of Zurich was therefore financially involved in the deportation of a total of 36,494 Africans, says the, the, the study. So that's a lot. I told you that. And this is how Zurich became the financial center of Europe, together with uh, Frankfurt for the, um, for the other reasons. So this is where I stopped before, 36,494 Africans and the Swiss, they are involved in it. And furthermore, the city of Zurich was invested in slave trade through the semi-governmental Zinskommission Loi. Um, and I'll read it for you. Besides these direct investment the Zurich textile industry also held structural ties to slavery. For example, the Indian fabrics manufactured in Zurich in the 18th century were used as a key trading commodity for pur purchasing slaves in West Africa. Moreover, in the 19th century, the Zurich cotton industry sourced most of its material from slave plantations in the south of the US. Some of the industrial and commercial enterprises to emerge from this sector went on to take up leading positions in the 20th century Swiss economy and played a significant part in contributing to Switzerland's wealth. Involvement of the Escher family. Oh, here it says, the Escher family, you know, the ones who founded the Credit Suisse, the Escher family is the most well-known example from a fairly large, large number of Zurich families that held ties to the colonial world and were often also involved in slavery in a variety of ways. Um, Alfred Escher, one of the founding fathers of modern-day modern Switzerland, did not own any plantations or slaves himself. You know, this is what I told you, they differentiate, like they make two banks out of one bank, like he openly, he was not involved into slavery or plantations, he was doing the other part for the plantations, yeah, the money part, yeah, and the, and the, the, um, the, the part of the politics, because he was in the, uh, he was a, a senator, and uh, this is what they do. It's the same with the, um, the pharmaceutical industry, Roche and Novartis. They, they made two or probably even more companies out of one company. So, you know, so there's no liability. Yeah, they, they, they can't be blamed for immoral things. And this, this is what Alfred Asher, he knew very well and he did the same thing. He just uh, openly, uh, he didn't have anything to do with it, but he did. Uh, however, his grandfather, Hans Kaspar Escher, funded at least one slave ship. And his father, Heinrich Escher, was a successful trader and investor in the US. And his uncle, Friedrich Ludwig Escher, ran the Buen Retiro coffee plantation in Cuba with over 80 slaves. The Escher family was thus linked to slavery in various ways. So you can read the whole article yourself. I mean, this is a um, conglomerate, you know, the, the, the whole family is into slavery, into banking and money. And um, this is 
the fair aristocracy. They will, if you would even would make so much money, they wouldn't let you keep it. They come with laws, they come with police, and they they would take away all your money. You know, so it's not enough to make money. You you need to be part of the bloodlines in order to keep it, expand it, and. Um, uh, and to be above all laws, as Switzerland is. That's why they call it neutral. And it's not neutral for us, the normal people, not the, the white Europeans and everybody else. It's not neutral for us, you know. They, they, you get terrorized in that country. They, they do what they want. They lie stuff together. Uh, they hate foreigners, even white foreigners like myself and many others. No, it's neutral for the aristocracy. They can hide their money. It's neutral. Neutral in this respect that other pharaohs and other ones of the nobility, or pharaohs' nobility, they can't attack other pharaohs inside Switzerland because it's neutral for them only. See, that's why they hide all the money in Switzerland. But I have a feeling they're going to dump Switzerland now. All, all the all the money is going to the Arab Emirates. It's even further away from from everything. There's a, there's a big dip in between, you know. So they can continue to do what they what they want, you know. And so there are no like uh, university professors sticking their noses too deep in it because it's not possible you know it's too far away so this is why the credit suisse now uh, it went bankrupt um well not directly because of this but because all the money had been has been taken off has been taken out and shipped over to the uh, the united arab emirates so Swiss Secret is probably the biggest banking scandal ever. There are 30,000 clients here, 30,000 Credit Suisse bank customers. Uh, on um, February 20th, 2022, the Süddeutsche Zeitung reported that over a year ago, it had received secret data through a secure digital mailbox. Uh, you know, the guy who stayed anonymous because he knows how how they kill people in Switzerland. And this is actually, you know, because I criticized the Swissies in international newspapers in 2010 and before and afterwards, uh, that they completely terrorized me there for, for a quarter of a century, you know, put me in prison for five and a half years. I got arrested several times by the anti-terrorist court, putting guns in my head. Uh, you know, if if you criticize the Swiss banks, you're dead. This is how it is. You know. So he talks about the organized crime corruption reporting project, and um, so here the notable people named. You know, it's all the fair aristocracy, eh? King Abdullah the Second of Jordan, Queen Rania of Jordan. Oh. Uh, Aliaksei Alexin, Belarusian businessman, blacklisted by the EU and US close associate uh, of Alexander Lukashenko. Oh, we all know that one. Uh, Hashim Yavan Bakht, Pakistani politician. Um, Haji Saifullah Khan Bangash, pa Pakistani politician. They're probably all corrupt, you know, politicians. And anyway, all politicians are uh, of the fair aristocracy. They're all of the nobility. It, you know, Louis Alphonse de Bourbon. De Bourbon uh, is a uh, is the head of the House of Bourbon, members of the family formerly ruled France and other countries, according to the legitimists. 
Louis Alphonse is considered the pretender to the defunct throne of France as Louis the 20th with the death of his father. Oh. So it's uh, the upper nobility. Anas El Fiki, the F Egypt former Minister of Information. Ev e Ivan Guta, Ukrainian agricultural baron. Uh, is a Ukrainian entrepreneur and co-founder of Maria Agro Holding Public Limited, one of Ukraine's largest grain producers. He defaulted on his debt in 2014 after the family had moved over 200 million into shell companies, uh, an oligarch. Yeah. I mean, why, why do you want to hide money in, in Switzerland, you know? Because they're all crooks. Well, a Syrian Abdul Halim Kadam, Syrian politician Zahid Ali Akbar Khan, Lieutenant General. Well, you don't become a general or a higher politician if you're not part of the fair aristocracy. Pakistani politician Sultan Ali Lakani, uh, the owner of McDonald's Pakistan. Another pharaoh, a sultan, it's a aristocratic title. Louis Carlo de Leon, which is a um, aristocratic um, name, everything with de, you know, de Leon, of, of the lions. You know. and the lion is a symbol of the aristocracy. Um, in Venezuela, the financial director of the uh, electricity. Pavlo Lazarenko, Prime Minister of Ukraine, the former. Ronald Lee of the Hong Kong. Ferdinand Marcos, well, we know how corrupted that one is or was. Uh, Imelda Marcos, the First Lady of the Philippines. They all went to prison, I think. Probably still are in prison. Hisham Talat Mustafa, Egyptian real estate magnet. Uh, Gamal Mubarak, the uh, Egyptian rulers, the president of Egypt, the sons. Saad Kair, Jordanian. And you know, the Russian oligarchy and, and Putin, you know, they're all in the Arab world, you know. And I mean, look at it, who gave all the weapons and the arms to the Arab world in order to attack the, uh, the JJ base, right? And all, all the weapons they, they have is Russian. The tanks, the airplanes, the Kalashnikov, the, the entire Muslim world, uh, they have Russian weapons. So, you know, that's why they're all together here, you know, Khaled Nazar, a general. Akhtar Abdul Rahman, Billy Raltenbach, Zimbabwe. Kosim Robar. They're all very influential a Serbian drug lord. Radoljub Radulovic. You know, drugs, and it's, it's, you put it at the same level as slavery, you know. It's, they don't care, you know, these pharaohs with what they can make money. And they always use Switzerland. They have been using it for 800 years, you know, since it was founded in 1291 to hide all their wealth there. And it seems they're going to abandon Switzerland. So I hope, you know, the um, it's going to fall. Former president of Armenia, German. Eduard Seidel, the biggest bribe scandal in German history. Wow. Alvaro Sobrino, Angolan banker, James Song, Taiwan. He was in the uh, Taiwan frigate scandal. They're all crooks. Look at that. Uh, Omar Mahmoud Soleiman. Uh, former vice president and the former head of the 
Egyptian intelligence, the uh, Kazakhstan, Talibov, Azerbaijan, uh, Calabrian Andrangheta, Antonio Velardo, also having his money there, Nervis Villa Lobos. So imagine when this Swiss secret, when it happened, you know, they all almost, they all almost got a heart attack. 30,000 people got a heart attack almost. Another frigate scandal, Bruno Wang. And they all started, you know, on February the 20th here. They immediately started to get their money out of Sw of Switzerland, out of the uh, the Swiss Credit Suisse Bank. Uh, and of course, using the uh, using the um, the big yachts, you know, to uh, to ship it all over, you know, and and with their own airplanes and everything to to get it into the Arab Emirates. So. I hope the JJ base is going to do something about the uh, the United Arab Emirates, which also has nothing to do with the Arab people. You know, it's it's pure pharaonic. So back then, the Swiss Asher family and their Credit Suisse bank were into slavery during World War Two. They had the Nazis use their Swiss Credit Suisse banks. And today they are associated with Putin's mafia. And the Swiss Credit Suisse triggered the Ukraine war. The father of Alfred Escher, by the name of Henry Escher, opened the first Hottinger Bank in America for his friend Baron Jean Conrad Hottinger, a Swiss nobleman with both a fleur de lis for the vertical rule and a Templar's cross for the horizontal rule in his code, <coughs> his code of arms. And that is typical Swissy, you know. They do both. And Switzerland is the neutral base for the fair aristocracy. So here's this coat of arms. And Fleur de Lis is vertical rule, the old world's order. And the Templar's cross is the horizontal rule, the republic, the, uh, the new world's order. And of course, in this Swiss coat of arms, you can find both because Switzerland is the neutral place where they can both uh, come and be uh, protected because Switzerland is neutral, but only for the fair aristocracy or pharaoh's nobility. So here is uh, Baron Jean Conrad Hottinger. And he was born in uh, here in Zurich in 1764. And so here it says, in the beginning 19th century, a family friend and associate, Henry Escher, established the first Hottinger representative office in America. His son, Alfred Escher, founded Credit Suisse, the Ecole Polytechnique of Zurich. This is the ETH in German and the school where Rudolf Huss, he went to, the second man in the, in the Nazi Third Reich. And he founded the Gotthard Rail. You remember the um, the tunnel ritual of the Gotthard? Well, it's all related. Before being made president of the National Council, that's the Swiss Senate. There are 200 blokes in there and, and girlies too. 
For his achievements, the city of Zurich recognizes him with a statue. So these are very, very influential uh, dynasties, and they are settled um, in the United States with their coats of arms and everything, and their banks and huge money out of the neutral base where all dynasties, where they all keep their money. Since hundreds of years, the very powerful Swiss Escher dynasty have set foot into the ruling upper class of America. No wonder America will never do anything against these highly criminal Swiss Nazi banks. So here's another ancestors of the Escher dynasty. His name is Heinrich Escher. He lived in the uh, 17th century, the 1600s. So that's like 450 years ago. That's a long time. There he is. And it says he was active as a merchant in the textile trade. So we just learned before the Swiss textile trade. They were connected with the cotton plantations in the Ameri in America, and they had uh, they were into slavery, financing it and even having their own plantations. And as a representative of the buyers, he was a member of the delegation for the renewal of the alliance of Zurich with Louis the Fourteenth. That's the French Sun King, Louis the Fourteenth. That's the oldest. Um, that was the oldest uh, king uh, who who's, who was a king f uh, longest in history. Uh, I think he was a king like more than 60 years or 70 years, longer than Queen Elizabeth and longer than uh, Pharaoh Ramses II. He was quite long as well. So that was the, the longest ruling king. Okay, that was the word I was looking for. And after the Treaty of Geneva and the wall dance had taken up there, Escher uh, in 1687 with a representative of Bern came to the court of Louis XIV, the Sun King. So he went in and out of the court of Louis XIV, and uh, it's the nobility of their uh, neutral base in the Alps, the Octagon, Pharaoh's neutral base. So because they got a lot of internal strife and problems and even kill each other, and they decided, okay, we have a neutral place, or we can put the money, nobody's going to steal it, there won't be any murders or, or killings amongst ourselves. Okay, in Switzerland they kill other people who are not of the nobility, and uh, that's why it's neutral people. And the Swiss people are not a people, but they are a product, because the... Um, the essential of a people is a people come in one color of skin and they come in one language. All other things, it's not a people. They are a product or a mix, like the Americans and also the jaywalkers. They're not a people, but a product. And more than 30 years ago, I had my first bad experiences with this Swiss Nazi bank, Credit Suisse, by then still having that Nazi logo when they stole all the money I had on me, 10 Swiss francs. And they really shouldn't have done that because I immediately had this Swiss robbery escalate. A crazy story, which I will tell you now. 
over 30 years ago, I was in a Swiss Credit Suisse bank in the capital of Bern while being a homeless in France and sleeping outside with a huge backpack. But I just wanted to look what Switzerland was about for a few days, merely passing through. But I understood pretty soon that I shouldn't stay there for too long, because in that huge Swiss Credit Suisse Nazi bank with solid marble floors and whatnot, I wanted to change about 11 Swiss francs of tiny coins, as I had been begging for some money in the Swiss capital the hours before, as I was hungry and hadn't eaten for days in a row. So I was already quite itchy, if you know what I mean. So here it says Swiss banks don't like homeless people very much. So I poured out a sort of a replica of a Swiss mountain in copper coins in front of the Swiss cashier lady at the counter and asked her to give me a bill so I could buy me some scoff. That's food in British slang. You have to go to the machine behind you near the wall, she said. OK, I moaned, already disliking the tone in the Swiss marble shebang, and shoved my Swiss copper mountain back in my two hands and went to the machine, while already attracting dozens of those weird Swiss looks all around me, stinging in my back most of all. So this is the Swiss bank. This is me with my handful of coins. And here it says the Swiss credits, Credit Suisse bank stole all my money. I shoveled my Swiss mountain into the Swiss money machine and thought, great, I've never seen that before. As I already had accumulated a great deal of changing coins experiences in the various countries of Europe over the years. The machine literally absorbed my Swiss mountain, making a weird sound which reminded me slightly of a burp, like the money monster just swallowing a Swiss mountain in one single go. And I was still very hungry and getting more and more South African style itchy marble floors, burping money machines, cold sterile Swiss Nazi bank, annoying bankster personnel, and getting serious incoming by all those worrisome looks around me. So I crossed the huge marble floor once again, while being scrutinized and Swiss eyeballed by nearly everyone in there. I finally made it, and feeling quite light with only a tiny receipt from the burping machine that had me lightened of my heavy Swiss copper mountain. I almost felt naked returning with only that tiny sheet of paper and that huge marble floor getting eyeballed from everyone. So here's that floor. Um, I couldn't find that flaw in the bank, but it looked very similar. This is from inside the Swiss Parliament, but it, it's the same, you know. Actually, they're opposite from the Swiss Parliament, that bank. So, and here's that machine. Here it says, burping Swiss money machine. That's what it did. So, I gave the receipt to the lady, and she gave me back only 35 cents Swiss wrappings for my whole mountain of Swiss copper coins, while she was displaying an obvious big smile all over her beforehand monotonous expression she had. She was definitely having the time of her life, enjoying the Swiss-German Schadenfreude, which means joy for damage in English, saying it all that we don't even have similar expressions in English, revealing the whole apparent mindset. 
It must have been obvious by my looks that they had a scabby, hungry, homeless in their fancy bank on that huge sterile marble floor feeling like being inside a funeral home seconds before getting incinerated. And I tell you, the Swiss shakedown, together with the rest of the ingredients, actually felt like the very end on that huge sterile marble floor in a funeral home. I want to see the manager, I stammered. I go get him, and still having the time of her life. Manager came. Yeah, the machine costs money. Do you think all in life is for free? While scrutinizing my homeless looks of me, the Untermensch, meaning subhuman in Swiss Nazi slang, as if it was normal, he said, here in Switzerland, using a counting machine cost 10 Swiss francs, which was exactly the amount plus 35 cents which I had put into the machine, which the smiling cashier lady must have known, but never told me, as it would have spoiled all the Swiss fun. So I had put 10 francs and 35 cents into the Swiss money machine, hoping to get a 10 Swiss francs bill to get myself some food. But instead of that, the Swiss money making machine absorbed all my food money, nothing left. Then I literally exploded, feeling the blood rush into my head while seeing the smiling expression on their faces making place for incredible despair. I quickly looked around what I could smash at that huge marble floor, which I already hated from the beginning, and saw nothing in that sterile place which I could grab and demolish, until I saw that bank card machine just in front of me on the counter, and I grabbed it and wanted to pull it out of the wall. But the electric cable was that long that when going backwards into the middle of that sea of marble, the cable still hadn't reached the end. So by then I just smashed it in the middle of that marble floor with tiny pieces shattering in all directions and not a scratch on the marble. I immediately felt kind of relieved after having gotten rid of it and out of my system. And now it was my time to smile and look around with a satisfied look on my face while I met with anguish around me, totally changing the previous setup of them smiling and me not. Now it was me having the fun of my life while they were all docking behind the various counters. I quickly left the perimeter before getting trapped in that marble funeral bank. And although cell phones didn't exist yet 30 years ago, I decided it better to leave the damn country immediately. Funny though, how I made friends with the hateful marble floor in the end, assisting me in my endeavors to smash that bank card machine. A few hours later, back in France with the entire local Swiss police force, still looking for me over there. I nicked some French cheese in the nearest French supermarket, got myself a crunchy French baguette, crashed on a park bench, and thought by myself, vive la France. By the way, this is how the banks, how they make fun of homeless people. This is the HSBC Bank UK, the Templars colors or the Swiss flag, red and white. I suppose this is a, a daughter of the, of, of the Swiss banks anyway. Anyway, all banks in the world are Nazi Templar banks of uh, Switzerland. Eh? So this is how they make fun of homeless people. When a bus shelter is your only shelter, it's hard to open a bank account. Well, this is what I had to, what I realized as well. I mean, I couldn't open a bank account here in France because I need uh, three proofs of, you know, of my rent being paid. 
I need three proofs of my uh, of my job, the uh, the salary, three copies, and a legal a, a, a valid pass passport, etc. etc. So they're just making fun of it, you know. It's hard to open a bank account when a when a when a bus shelter is your only shelter. And this is their mindset of the banks. Eh? It's terrible. At least me, homie Ross, I didn't accept what when they stole my 10 Swiss francs. Eh? I didn't accept it. Eh? No way. And I realized very quickly when being in Switzerland that, you know, I didn't see any homeless people, you know, like sleeping out like this. And from what I heard many times, if they find homeless people, the Swiss, they call up the police and within an hour you're gone and they put you in a psychi psychiatric ward in the boogie house. And uh, so this is why you don't see people sleeping out like this in Switzerland. So you be careful in countries where you don't see people sleeping out. Eh? Maybe it's horrible, like in London or in Paris, you see people sleeping out. But at least there is the freedom to do so, okay? And here in this article, even in German, even the Swiss, they are moaning about it, that they need to pay for if you want to exchange coins. And it's said in the article, like in the beginning, that the, uh, the, the, the lady at the counter here, Schalter, that means counter, said that it cost money. Well, me, they didn't even tell me anything. I didn't know. If I would have known, of course, I wouldn't, I, I would have dropped all the, the, the Swiss mountain of Swiss coins in the snack bar where I wanted to go, you know. But nobody told me, you know. They just wanted to make some fun out of a homeless. Because the Untermensch, the, um, the subhuman, the idea is very, very much alive in Switzerland. And Switzerland is, you know, where the Nazis stopped in 1945. It went on in Switzerland, eh? So, at least I didn't accept their cunning. Then, many years later, and this time in Zurich, again, I got harassed in a Swiss bank for nothing both times for nothing you know to just provoke problems all the time you know it's, it was very inviting they had statues uh, historical statues which i just wanted to film inside it would have taken me five seconds you know but uh they wanted to make a problem out of it eh? so you can see it here on wolf clan media i also got it in my channel but uh and this is the title, Swiss Banksters Call Police and Assault Journalist Sean Ross. So this is in Zurich, the financial center of Europe, where the Credit Suisse was uh, founded. On Monday, 30th, May 2011, Peter Odensov conducted an interview with a senior Swiss banker in Moscow, Russia. The banker explained that he had been involved in making a direct payment in cash to a professional assassin who had been contracted to kill the president of a third world country. The Swiss bank involved received a coded handwritten payment instruction from a foreign secret service. I can tell you, the Foreign Secret Service is called Octogon, the top of the Nazi Templars. This procedure was and is standard practice in the administration of Bilderberg-initiated elite black ops. The Swiss banks concerned regularly receive such payment orders for contract assassination work. So here's the whole interview by uh, Peter Odinsov here. Revelations from a Swiss banking insider, Peter Odinsov, Noviden, Russia, Russian Weekly. Revelations from a Swiss banking insider, 
by on June the 6th, 2011. And this is exactly the time when I also got arrested a few months before that. And at the end of 2010, they killed this Austrian um, guy who wanted to, who had a lot of intel on Swiss banks and he wanted to sell it and they murdered him. And when I talked about it in the Austrian newspaper, then uh, yeah, that was the end of me. So the interview with Peter Odinsov took place on May the 30th. That might have been the same day when they arrested me, eh? May the 30th. With the Russian weekly magazine Novi Den. Can you tell us something about your involvement in Swiss banking business? I have worked for Swiss banks for many years. I was designated as one of, of the top directors of one of the biggest Swiss banks. My guess is Credit Suisse. You know, they're highly criminal. During my work, I was involved in the payment, in the direct payment in cash to a person who killed the president of a foreign country. I was in a meeting where it was decided to give this cash money to the killer. This gave me dramatic headaches and troubled my conscience. It was not the only case that was really bad, but it was the worst. It was a payment instruction on order of a foreign secret service written by hand, giving the order to pay a certain amount to a person who killed the top leader of a foreign country. And it was not the only case. We, we received several such handwritten letters coming from foreign secret services giving the order to pay out cash from secret accounts to fund revolutions or for the killing of people. I can confirm what John Perkins has written in his book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. There really exists such a system and Swiss banks are involved in such cases. Right? which me and my family, they had, we, we had to feel this, right? And Perkins' book is also translated and available in Russian. Can you tell us uh, which bank it is and who was responsible? It was one of the top three Swiss banks. Well, that's Credit Suisse, UBS. No, I don't know the, one, the other one. At that time, and it was the president of a country in the third world, but I don't want to give out too many details because they will find me very easily if I say the name of the president and the name of the bank. I will risk my life. You can't name any person in the bank either. No, I can't. But I can assure you this happened. We were several persons in the meeting room. The person in charge of the physical payment of the cash came to us and asked us if he is allowed to pay out such a big amount in cash to that person and uh, one of the directors explained the case and all others said okay you can do it did this happen often was this kind of a slush fund yes this was a special fund managed in a special place in the bank where all the coded letters came in from abroad the most important letters were handwritten we had to decipher them and in them was the order to pay a certain amount of cash from accounts for the assassination of people funding revolutions, funding strikes, funding all sorts of parties. I know that certain people who are Bilderbergers were involved in such orders. I mean, they gave the orders to kill. Can you tell us in what year or decade this happened? I prefer not to give you the pre precise year, but it was in the 80s. So if I read this here in the 80s, it must be Thomas Sankara. Uh, there was a president, um, I think he was murdered in the 80s. A fantastic guy. He uh, really a fantastic Nubian president in the 80s. I'll look it up afterwards. Did you have a problem with this work? Yes, a very big problem. I couldn't sleep for many days and after a while I left the bank. If I give you too many details, they will trace me. Several secret services from abroad, most, mostly English speaking, gave orders to fund illegal acts, even the killing of people through Swiss banks. We had to pay on the instructions of foreign powers for the killing of persons who didn't follow the orders of Bilderberg or the IMF 
or the World Bank, for example. This is a very startling revelation that you are making. Why do you feel the urge to say this now? Well, there he is, Thomas Sankara, fantastic person. Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara, and he lived from, he died in 1987, so he died in the 80s, was a Burkina Bay military officer, revolutionary and pan-Africanist who served as president of Burkina Faso from his coup in 1983 to his assassination in 1987. Viewed by supporters as a charismatic and iconic figure of revolution, he's com commonly referred to as Africa's Che Guevara. Well, we can be pretty sure that this was the, uh, the one. Fantastic person, really. He, he would have done, he already did a lot of good for Africa and and uh, this guy was not corrupted at all. You can read it yourself. Uh, just punch pause. So all the good people, they get murdered. Eh? Uh, and the Swiss octagon, they are behind it. So you just punch pause if you want to read it all. Yeah, this is the things he did. Yeah, like, I remember this, you know, he sold off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and made the Renault 5, the cheapest car sold in Burkina Faso at that time, the official service car of the ministers. You know, he painted them black, you know, instead of a black limousine. They were like stuffed into a, a, a tiny French car, you know. <laughs> this is the kind of guy he was. Fantastic person. And of course, a person like this, you know, a, a person like that doesn't take any orders of any Swiss Nazi Templar banks, eh? By the Octagon. So they had to, he had to go. I have a lot of respect for this man. And in the interview, when they say the 1980s, I knew immediately it must have been Thomas Sankara. I have a lot of respect for this great Nubian. Too bad. So I repeat the last question. This is a very startling revelation that you are making. Why do you feel the urge to say this now? Because Bilderberg is meeting in Switzerland. Because the world situation is getting worse and worse and because the biggest banks in Switzerland are involved in unethical activities, most of these operations are outside the balance sheet. It's a multiple of what is officially declared. It's not audited and happening without any taxes. The figures involved have a lot of zeros. It's huge amounts. So it's billions. It's much more, it's trillions, completely unaudited, illegal, and besides the, the tax system, basically it's a robbery of everybody. I mean, most normal people are paying taxes. Yeah, well, they robbed my bloody 10 Swiss francs, eh? <laughs> well, it's not a lot of zeros, but for me, it was a big zero, you know, I was being homeless. I had at least one big zero after the one, eh? For a homeless, that's a big zero. I mean, most normal people are paying taxes and abiding by the laws. Well, no. What is happening here is complete against our Swiss values. So it's a Swiss guy, eh? Uh, that's the problem with these Swiss. They, they believe, you know, that they have values. They don't see that, you know, the laws that are the laws of the fair aristocracy they're ruling, you know? I just don't get it. And they all think they have to protect the Swiss banks, you know. Oh, you know, when I was living in that village next to Bern, I got aggressed by neighbors, you know, because I dared, as a foreigner, to criticize the Swiss banks. I mean, this is very rare, you know, a guy like this, uh, because he, he, uh, he, he saw the things going on, the evil things. But most people, they don't understand it. And all Swissies, they think they need to protect the Swiss banks and terrorize Homie Ross with his whole family because he, Homie Ross dared to speak out in foreign newspapers. 
and on YouTube. So what is happening here is complete against our Swiss values, like neutrality, honesty, and good faith. In the meetings I was involved in, the discussions were uh, were completely were completely against our democratic principles. You see, most of the directors of Swiss banks are not locals anymore. They are foreigners, mostly Anglo-Saxon, either American or British. They don't respect our neutrality. They don't respect our values. They are against our direct democracy. They just use the Swiss banks for their illegal means. They use huge amounts of money created out of nothing and they destroy our society and destroy the people worldwide just for greed. They seek power and destroy whole countries like Greece, Spain, Portugal, or Ireland, and Switzerland be, will be one of the last in line. And they use China as working slaves and a person like Joseph Ackermann. Well, Joseph Ackermann, he was born actually uh, next to that big lake where um, where the bees will rise. You remember that? I made that film of the, the seven hills who are seven kings. And there is a town called Wallenstadt right there. And this is where he, where he was born. So Joseph Ackermann, who is a Swiss citizen, is the top man at a German bank and he uses his power for greed and doesn't respect the common people. So this is Wallenstadt, you know, this lake here where the, the monster is supposed to, uh, to rise from, where the seven hills rules or seven kings are. The seven Kurfürsten is the only place in the world, what I found, where the seven hills are seven kings, just as it says in the Bible. I haven't found any other place. So here are some people here who from there. Lucius Wildhaber, that was the, the first director um, of the, um, the European Court of, of uh, Human Rights in Strasbourg. I mean, how can, be, how can a Swiss be the director in, in the European community of the human rights? Eh? And... Um, I dropped a complaint when he was still the uh, against Switzerland when he was still the uh, the director. Well, you want to know the result, eh? Right? And um, actually, he died after a visit with Putin. Well, you can see him here with Putin. A few weeks later, he died of a heart attack or something. Here, here he is, Joseph Ackerman, the guy, uh, the the banker, and. Uh, the Swiss guard and, uh, and, and there are a lot of other people, even some Americans. Uh, the, there was a guy who was a uh, um, an admiral or something in the uh, an American admiral. I don't see him here. And this church here. Uh, it's a it's a chapel of Saint George. Here it is on the mountain here. I don't think we oh yeah we can see it here. It's here on the mountain. And uh, Saint George was the uh, the the, cha the saint protector of the Knights Templars. So the Knights Templars were there where where the beast is supposed to rise, where the bankers are. It's all there, eh? And. Um, and this chapel was of uh, St. George was first mentioned in the year 1253. It's probably much older. And this is exactly the time of the, uh, of the Knights Templars. And it was the Knights Templars who, uh, who founded the, uh, the Swiss banks, the banking. You know, they founded this, the Czech, they invented the Czech. So it's not a, not a surprise we, found, we find Joseph Ackermann in exactly that place. So here it is in German, Wallenstadt, as the, the German edition is of course much more extended. So I'll, I'll just skip all this, eh? And um, 
So there are many more persons who are from Wahlenstadt. But okay. Uh, here he is. Edward Walter Eberle, a US American admiral. Well, he was born in Switzerland, eh? In, in Wahlenstadt. As I told you, there are one million Swiss Americans in the US who have taken over all key positions like presidents and admirals and and so forth. So I continue the interview here about uh, Joseph Ackermann. And a person like Joseph Ackermann, who is a Swiss citizen, is the top man at a German bank and he uses his power for greed and does not respect the common people. He has quite a few legal cases in Germany. And also now in the States, he's a Bilderberger and does not care about Switzerland or any other country. You see, they're all multinationals. And how come a Swiss from this very special place, he's the, the director of the, I think it's the biggest bank in the world, the Deutsche Bank, the German bank. And uh, in Frankfurt, of course, as I told you. Uh, well, because all banks, actually nowadays, all banks are actually Swiss Nazi Templar banks because they started it. Even all banks, all national banks, everything. I go on. Are you saying some of these people that you mentioned will be at the upcoming Bilderberg meeting in June in St. Morris? I went there. It was not in June. I think it was. Um, uh, I think it was in uh, April. Yeah, I were in May. I went there in 2011. Yes, so they're currently in a position of power. Yes, they have huge amount of money available and, it, uh, and use it to destroy whole countries. They destroy our industry and build it up in China. On the other hand, they opened up the gates in Europe for all Chinese products. The working population of Europe is earning less and less. The real aim is to destroy Europe. And this is what he's saying in the beginning of 2011. Right? Do you think that the Bilderberg meeting in St. Moritz has symbolic value? Because in 2009, they were in Greece, 2010 in Spain, and look what happened to them. Does this mean Switzerland can expect something bad? Yes. Switzerland is one of the most important countries for them because there is so much capital here. They are meeting there because apart from other things, they want to destroy all values that Switzerland stands for. You see, it's an obstacle for them, not being in the EU or Euro, not totally controlled by Brussels and so on. Well, you see, this is a Swissy, you know, they're completely brainwashed in Switzerland. Over the last 800 years, they are like dressed like a, like a, like a police dog, you know. And they really believe all this, this, what he's saying here, this Swissy, you know, that Switzerland is neutral and they have values and, and uh, he doesn't understand it. He just had a, a, a short glimpse as being a top banker, what he saw some things he didn't like, you know, but all Swissies, they, um, they work with the system, you know, they're, they're very dangerous because they don't see it. Yeah. They are very fanatic in protecting their clean and neutral Switzerland and very fanatic. You know? And, uh, so, Regarding values, I'm not talking about the big Swiss banks because they're not Swiss anymore. Most of them are led by Americans. I'm talking about the real Swiss spirit that the common people cherries and hold up. You know, as soon in 1291, when the Knights Templars came and founded Switzerland, they put four peoples together and they made the Swiss product of, uh, I mean, a people comes with in one skin color and they come in one language the, these are the, um, the these are the facts concerning a people i mean i can't help it i can't change it this is how it is and when they come in four languages you know that's not a people anymore that's four peoples yeah 
it's a product. And they immediately started to murder the, the good people in Switzerland. And they, they are bred, you know, it's a very dangerous, fanatic, bred product of the Knights Templars and the fair aristocracy. And this guy, he doesn't even, he doesn't see it because the Swissies, they've been bred for 800 years, you know, and they think it's okay, you know, to terrorize an immigrant like me and my, my Swiss family, my Swiss wife as well, because I, 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 um, I criticize the Swiss banks and all Swiss, they're all bred, you know, fanatically to protect the Swiss banks. And only because this guy, he had a glimpse about not so, what the jaywalkers say, not so kosher things going on there. And he started thinking things, you know, normally the Swissies, they can't apprehend, they just can't. Sure, it has symbolic value, as you said, regarding Greece and Spain. Their aim is to be a kind of exclusive elite club that has all the power and everybody else is impoverished and uh, down. Do you think that the aim of Bilderberg is to create a kind of global dictatorship controlled by the big global corporations where there, where there are no sovereign states anymore? Yes, and Switzerland is the only place left with direct democracy. Well, there is no direct democracy because they have seven heads of state. And if they vote for something, it's not in their democracy or something, which is not direct. The seven heads of state, they're going to decide if the new law is going to be taken or not. And many, many laws, they, they were never executed anyway. So there is no direct democracy. And here you can see it again that the Swiss is, you know, so there is Pharaoh. And these Pharaoh, they kept like 50% um, good slaves, you know, peasants to work for them and all this. And they just don't see it, you know, because they're completely bred, indoctrinated over 800 years. It's probably the most indoctrinated, I can't say people, in the world. There's not much more indoctrinated, you know. They use the blackmail of too big to fail, as in the case of the UBS, to put our country in big debt, just like they did with many other countries. In the end, maybe they want to do with Switzerland what they did with Iceland, with all the banks in the country bankrupted, and also bring it into the EU. Of course, the EU is under the iron grip of the Bilderberg. What do you think could stop this plan? Omi Ross, of course. Well, that's the reason I speak to you. It's truth. Truth is the only way. Well, that's what I always say, you know, information. Put a light on this situation, expose them. They don't like to be in the spotlight. We have to cre create transparency in the banking industry and in all levels of society. What you're saying is there is a correct side to the Swiss banking business and there are a few big banks that are m misusing the financial system for their illegal activities. Yes, the big banks are training their staff with Anglo-Saxon values. I mean, this is typical Swiss, you know. Even if you see something going on which he doesn't like, this Swiss here, uh, he always put the blame on, on foreigners. Now it's the Anglo-Saxons, eh? They are training them to be greedy and ruthless, and greed is destroying Switzerland and everybody else. As a country, we have a majority of the most correct operating banks in the world. If you look at the small and mid-sized banks, it's just the big ones who operate globally. that are a problem. They are not Swiss anymore and don't consider themselves as such. Do you think it is a good thing that people are exposing Bilderberg and showing who they really are? I think the Strauss-Kahn case is a good chance for us because it shows, or you remember the Strauss-Kahn case, that was his Frenchie, and he was definitely going to become France's president. And then he had this, uh, this rape case in New York, which of course, uh, nothing ever happened, you know. 
is a good chance for us because it shows these people are corrupted, sick in their minds, so sick they are full of vices, and those vices are kept under wraps on their orders. Some of them, like Strauss Kahn, uh, rape women. Others are Sado Mazo, Sado Mazo, or pedophile, and many are into Satanism. When you go in some banks, you see these satanic symbols, like in the Rothschild Bank in Zurich. Oh, I filmed that one, eh? Maybe you saw my video with all the lizards on it and all. These people are controlled by blackmail because of the weaknesses they have. They have to follow orders or they will be exposed, so they will be destroyed or even killed. The reputation of Strauss Kahn is not uh, only killed in the mass media, he could be killed also literally. Dominique Strauss Kahn, eh? they say this, uh, the, you know, that he raped some servant girl, a Nubian servant girl in a rich New York uh, hotel. Well, it was probably a setup. Eh? Since Ackermann is in the steering committee of Bilderberg, do you think he's a big decision maker there? Yes, but there are many others like Lagarde, who will probably be the next IMF head, also a member of Bilderberg, then Sarkozy and Obama. They have a new plan to censor the internet because the internet is still free. They want to control it and use terrorism or whatever as a reason. They could even plan something horrible so that they have an excuse. Now, this is interesting. So, this guy is already telling this before it happened and right after. And it really started in 2015, so four years later with the terrorist attacks in Paris. Um, it started the censorship on the internet you know, on YouTube and all this. So he said it this year, four years before that. So, you know, it, it, this is a proof that this is a real interview with somebody who is not lying. Yeah. Um, so that is your fear. It's not only a fear, I'm certain of it. As I said, they give orders to kill. So they are capable of terrible things. If they have the feeling they're also losing control, like the uprising now in Greece and Spain, and maybe Italy will be next, then they can do another Gladio, you know, the Gladio um, scandal. Stay behind was the code name. I was close to the Gladio network, as you, uh, as you know, they in instigated terrorism paid by American money to control the political system in Italy and other European countries. Regarding the, num the murder of Aldo Moro, the payment was done through the same system as I told you about. Was Ackermann part of this payment system at the Swiss bank? Smile. You are the journalist. Look at his career and how fast he made it to the top. What do you think can be done to hinder them? Well, there are many good books out there that explain the background and connect the dots, like the one I mentioned by Perkins. These people really have hit men that get paid to kill. Some of them get their money through Swiss banks, but not only. They have a system set up all over the world and to expose the public, these people that are prepared to do anything to keep control. And I mean anything. Through exposure, we could stop them. Yes, telling the truth, we are confronted with really ruthless criminals, also big war criminals. It's worse than genocide. They are ready and able to kill millions of people just to stay in power and in control. Can you explain from your view why the mass media in the West is more or less completely silent regarding Bilderberg? Because there is an agreement between them and the owners of the media. You don't talk about it. They buy them. Also, some of the top media figures are invited to the meetings, 
but are told not to report anything they see and hear. It's the structure of Bilderberg. In the structure of Bilderberg, is there an inner circle that knows the plans, and then there is a majority who just follow orders? Yes. You have the inner circle who are into Satanism, and then there are the naive or less informed people. Some people even think they're doing something good, the outer circle. According to exposed documents and own statements, Bilderberg decided back in 1955 to create the EU and the Euro, so they made important and far-reaching decisions. <clears throat> yes, and you know that Bilderberg was founded by Prince Bernard, a former member of the SS and Nazi party, and he also worked for IG Farben. And he studied in Lausanne, eh? You know this, Wissy, but you don't want to say it, maybe? I know it. Whose subsidiary uh, produced Cyclone B. Uh, the other guy was the head of Occidental Petroleum, who had close relations to the communists in the Soviet Union. They work both sides, but really these people are fascists who want to control everything and everybody and who and everybody and who gets in their way is removed. Is the payment system you explained outside of normal operation, com compartmentalized and in secret? In those Swiss banks, the normal employees don't know this is happening. It's like an own secret department in the bank. As I said, these operations are outside of the balance sheet with no supervision. Some are situated in the same building, others are outside. They have their own security and special area where only authorized people can enter. How do they keep this transaction out, out of the international SWIFT system? Well, some of the clear stream listings were true, were true in the beginning. They just included fake names to make people believe the whole list is fake. You see, they also make mistakes. The first list was true, and you can trace a lot of things. You see, there are people around that discover ir irregularities and the truth, and they and they tell it. Afterwards, of course, there are lawsuits, and these people are forced to shut up. The best way to stop them is to tell the truth, put the spotlight on them. If we don't stop them, we will end up as their slaves. Thank you for this interview, Peter Odinsov, uh, Noviden Info. So it's probably a Russian guy, maybe a Ukrainian. And this was in the very same time that uh, they arrested me with an anti terrorist squad. So this is the same time, as you can see here, this is in October 2010. And a few months later, in June 2011, there was that interview which I just read to you about the the hitman working for the Swiss banks, you know, Credit Suisse. You know? and, uh, and I was arrested a couple of months before the uh, one of the times, uh, that time that came into the newspaper in... Uh, April 2011. So this is in German. It only exists in German. And these these hitmen for the Swiss banks they murdered this guy. They put him in a Swiss prison, and in two weeks' time they he got suicided. I and I talked about it here. So here's my name, the historian Sean Ross. And here it says, he gesetz it means he, he was suicided, the code O2T torture. I talked about it, and that was the end of me and my family. You know, my, they ruined us. Now I've been on the run for eight years from Switzerland. So here's some more about it. And, um, Exactly as Peter Odinsov in that interview, or actually the uh, the banker, 
how he um, how he explained it. Uh, and I had Swiss police uh, try to murder me. They shot at me in the forest, and uh, yeah. So I I know that these things happen, and uh, it was a very truthful interview. So I show it once more. So that was exactly the same time, eh? So here's my name. It was in the Austrian newspaper called the Krone. The Krone Zeitung. Oh, here it says Krone Zeitung. Kronen Zeitung. Okay, here it says Kronen and here it says Krone. Okay, that's why I mixed up. So, and there were a lot of all the time I ended up in the Swiss newspapers, I've already shown that to you. And so I'm not going to show it once more. And the authorities do nothing. And also the French authorities, they protect the Swiss banks, they protect the Swiss. I tried to drop a, a official complaint at the Justice Department three times. And as this guy was talking about it, that they were going to uh, use terrorism as a means to control the internet, I knew I, 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 when I infiltrated the Octagon group, they talked about this doing terrorist attacks in Berlin and uh, London and uh, and Paris. So I tried to warn the French authorities, but uh, they didn't do anything. They all protect Switzerland and their banks and their huge pharmaceutical industries. They all protect it. So. I shouldn't have done it, you know. I mean, I, I thought I could open up my mouth and as they portray this society as so free, that we have all the freedom, you know. So it's their own fault, you know, that they por portray this lie about our society because we're not free at all. It's a total dictatorship, people. So I'll read it for you. The Swiss beast world government so this is inside the swiss parliament and you all see the freemason checkerboard designs all over and a lot of marmor as well marble and uh, this is the entrance if you go out here i think it's here just opposite of the uh just opposite of the Swiss Parliament, there is that Swiss uh, Credit Suisse bank with the marble floor and everything. So it's sort of typically the same, maybe the same architects. Well, this is marble. Yeah, and this probably as well. But this is typical marble. And inside that bank, you know, it's, it almost looks like, like, like this here. You know, it's all the same, the parliament, the, the government, the banks, the, the pharmaceutical industry. It's all the same, uh, the same beast. Yeah. So opposite here is right, you know, it's like it's just a few meters, you know. There is that bank where I smashed the, um, the, uh, the machinery on the, um, on their fine marble floor because they they stole all the money I had. You know? And the world is being ruled from out of Switzerland. Remember Bill Cooper, he said it as well. And don't forget this interview by the by Peter Odensov. I wonder what he's doing today. Probably a Russian uh, journalist mm, on the good side. He probably fled. And uh, so now we know, you know, that uh, the Russians are very active in Africa with the Wagner Group. Are they, are they the ones who executed uh, Thomas Sankara in 1987? What they talked, about, what the, the Swiss banker talked about. I mean, he he did give the interview in Moscow, didn't he? Right? And I told you, Putin. He's a Swiss sleeper agent, and the rest of his mafia guys, you know, and it's all out of the Knights Templars who founded the Teutonic Knights, who ended up in the Baltic, 
where Putin was born in St. Petersburg, where is the biggest castle in Europe, the Malbor Castle of the Teutonic Knights. And this happened when the, uh, the Knights Templars, who originally spoke French, they founded Switzerland and started to speak Swiss German and became the Teutonic Knights and the Swiss banks. The world is being ruled from out of Switzerland. The Swiss beast world government.